let's do some multi-touch stuff. Just create a new WPF application and we're going to basically just create a very simple application, the sort of default multi-touch application which is an image that we can pull around, stretch and rotate. So up comes my new WPF application. I now want to just uh, replace that grid with a canvas and upon that canvas place the single image control that we're going to use at this moment in time. Okie dokie. So let's set up some properties for that image control. Let's start by just simply giving it an image um, to look at. And I'm going to select one of the default images just because they're on the computer. And I think I'm going to have the old penguins. Why not? Okay, now we'll just resize that so that it looks a little bit better inside our window. Because we're going to be able to zoom in later with all our multi touch stuff. Okay, now one of the things you have to do is set the manipulation mode. You can set it to a whole series of individual events that you want to receive about manipulation or you can set it to all. So having set that up to all, now what I want to do is um, set up the default um, render transform. And I got myself a bit messed up there, but set up my render transform and we're going to set that up to a static resource that we're going to define next. Um, so I'm just going to call that uh, initial matrix transform, why not? Okay, so having got that defined and sorted out our quotations, we can now go on and um, let's just set that up. Okay, so so inside our app.xaml we can set up some resources and I'm going to set up this uh, matrix transformation um, which we've utilized calling it initial matrix transform and that's just going to set the basic render transform which is really just going to set up its offset position so something very straightforward Okay, so now we can go back to our window and you can see that we've got our setup there. So now I can um, start adding some other pieces to our application definition. And what I'm going to do for the window is just actually make sure it comes up, um, make sure it comes up as maximized. and then what we want to do is set up our event. Now the event I'm going to take is the manipulation delta. So when a manipulation is occurring this will provide us with the changes that are happening in that manipulation. Those changes might represent rotation, position as in movement that's occurred and scale changes. So on manipulation delta let's actually get hold of first of all um, the manipulation data and then let's go get hold of our original source object which is of course our image control okay now what I'm going to do is actually do some custom matrix work so that we have one matrix that has all the render transforms to apply in, in the end um, so we're going to get hold of the initial image render transforms matrix state
and now we can go on and just start actually using that state but first of all I need to calculate the um, original center of our image control now I might otherwise use render transform origin to acquire this um, but that didn't quite give me the results I expected so we're going to stick with actually just calculating the um, actual width and height uh, as our center and now I can actually go forward and um, apply if you like the the movement changes to this actual base matrix and I'm going to do that using the translate and I'm going to use the um, manipulation data X and Y values so essentially we're looking at the vector along which our image control is being moved and we're applying that to our matrix of rendering information now having done that I need to actually recalculate the center of our image control because potentially it will have now moved so I'll just do that using a transform against the point that was our original center and stick that in a new center variable and now I can apply any rotation that's there in our manipulation delta so I can just do a matrix dot rotate at and grab hold of the rotation delta and apply it from our new center coordinates. Now, having done that of course we've moved so we now need to recreate our center again and just bring that up to date and now I can actually apply the um, scale changes that might have happened in our um, manipulation so I can just do a matrix dot scale at and then apply the same manipulation delta scale value to both X and Y axes uh, about the center that we've just recalculated and now I've actually got a transform matrix which applies both movement, rotation and scale changes so I can now put that as our render transform state and essentially cause all of those potential changes to be implemented against our image control. Last thing to do is tell um, the event handler that we've handled the event and then we can start running our application so I just switch into debug mode, it's going to compile up and it will bring up the application um, that's going to go main screen and I'm, or maximized, I'm not actually running um, the capture program maximized here but to actually um, do this in proper multi-touch I'm going to utilize the CodePlex multi-touch Vista project which enables me to just start up a multi-touch service control because I'm running this on a standard HP laptop um, and having got um, you can see the red dot moving around there, that's one of my touch points. I've actually got three mice plugged into this particular laptop. And then once I've started up the actual multi-touch surface, Freudian slip service, I can start up the Windows 7 mouse driver or multi-touch driver. And now we can come up and here is our multi-touch ap application. And here are our various touch points that you can see moving around the screen and then I can grab hold of my image and I can start pulling it around and all of those changes that I'm actually uh, creating are being implemented in our on the manipulation delta event and as you can see our image control is scrolling around all over the place super fun so there's nothing to stop you doing this on your own standard PC you just need the multi-touch Vista project from Coplex Windows 7 release candidate and Visual Studio 2010 with the .NET 4 Beta 1.